Thank you so much. These people want to win the hackathon. This is why they're applauding so hard. <laughs> My name is Maria. I'm with Near Dev Hub, and I do hackathons, and including this one, uh, I think we did a pretty good job with 800 registrations, on almost 800, and dozens of submissions. So Dev Hub team and me, <laughs> we spent the last night selecting 11 most interesting pitches. So today at the pitching competition, we will present you top 11, and we will select one of the winners of this hackathon, the winner of the nomination pitch competition, right? So the rest of the winners we will announce online on November 17th, so don't get too excited. This won't be the winner of this hackathon. This is just one of the winners. Still really great. So let me introduce the judges of the pitching competition. Please meet Laura from Near Horizon. Please meet Eric from Pagoda, Oleg from Sweatcoin, Sweat Economy, sorry, Alex from Aurora, and Luis from Minbase. <laughs> so this is how it's going to work. Um, they call me Maria the Timer, because during the pitch competition, when the team goes over three minutes, I just cut them. I just cut them off. So they only have three minutes to pitch, and the judges will have three minutes to answer the questions. So probably two questions for each team, if we're lucky, maybe three. Um, and then after 11 pitches, uh, the judges and me, we will go backstage to select our favorite team. So let's introduce our first team, Obrigado. <laughs> Um, we're Obrigado, and we're here to talk to you about uh, enabling compute on the near ecosystem by utilizing idle computing power. So currently, uh, the near ecosystem facilitates front-end, um, decentralized front-end using BOSS, decentralized back-end through smart contracts executing transactions, but we believe heavy compute should be, should be part of the near ecosystem. So what's the problem? So this graph um, shows the um, market share trends between cloud providers. And as you can see, the market share trend is going up for the big providers, meaning their, their, their market share is actually increasing, and it's becoming less and less decentralized over time. And to compound that, there are also data, as you can see, that um, the data here shows that the demand is increasing more and more over time for cloud computing resources. So this is Obrigado. So Obrigado can execute heavy compute tasks, including training large neural networks, um, genomic data processing, and drug discovery. And this is done through task nodes, enabling their idle compute power to be used and this will be executed through the near blockchain. And we believe with Obrigado, heavy compute is near. So our roadmap. So during this hackathon, we launched our smart contracts on the near testnet, and they're functional. We launched our front end on BOSS, and it's functional. And our future roadmap, we want to improve security and privacy for our users. We want to improve the workflow and the user experience. And we also want to support more languages. Currently, it supports Python, but we want to be able to reach as many different providers, uh, languages as possible. So our team, we met just a few days ago at the hackathon, and it's been amazing. Um, we come from a variety of backgrounds, including technical experience in the centralized cloud computing space. So here's a quick demo. Yeah. So as you can see, we have two worker nodes, and we have a task submitter. So the worker nodes are currently searching for new tasks that are added to the near blockchain. And as you can see, the task submitter submits their task with a bounty of 10 near. The worker nodes are now receiving this task. They found it. They're processing the transaction. And just focus on the, um, the account balance of these worker nodes. So the account balance has been added to um, their account. They've shared the bounty equally for completing this task. So this is what it looks like with two nodes. 
Time's but we up. want to I'm have. I'm sorry. Time's up. Thank you sure. so much, Timo. Obrigado. <laughs> now don't hide behind me. Go to the center of the stage in, case, in case our judges have some questions. So we have a mic here. There is a whole team. To be. <laughs> I'm going to scream my question. Um, can you talk a little bit more about what your go-to-market strategy is? Who, are, who would you target first as like the end user of this application? Or this application? So, um, yeah, uh, it would be basically um, any kind of research institutions or um, uh, think of a somebody who, who wants to, to train large-scale neural networks, um, um, microbiome research institutions, DNA processing facilities, and things like that. So anybody who would use um, uh, traditional cloud and centralized cloud could opt in as this um, uh, for this alternative. Is there any is there any verification of the results of the compute? Um, do you do it uh, multiple times, or how does it work? Yes, basically uh, every job has um, um, an infinite amount of uh, can be taken by any amount of nodes. And once results are submitted, they are uploaded to IPFS or any kind of external storage. And the on-chain data stores only the location of that result and the hash. So at the moment of, of the result submission, the caches are compared. And um, at that moment, if there is at least one different hash, then the job goes into a challenged mode. And then uh, there could be a way of uh, having a whitelisted or trusted nodes that are going to perform only, uh, like validator nodes, that are going to validate only those challenged jobs. And in that case, if the um, challenged results matches this, um, so th the reward or the bounty is going to be distributed only to the nodes which submitted the correct result after validated trusted result comes in. Are you going to be price competitive, or what's going to be the you know your differentiation? Why would these institutions sort of use you? So we believe that depends on the dynamics of, of nodes joining the network. Uh, there's going to be an alternative. Market is going to dictate the price. And it can easily happen that the price um, to compute something on, uh, on Obrigado is uh, higher than on, um, on, on the traditional nodes. Um, <clears throat> but you will have always this kind of resistance. And there could be, market could be dictating the low price. So for, ex for instance, if there is, um, if there's a lot of idle compute, GPUs sitting uh, it, it, um, and at consumers' houses, they might just decide to run one node and s forget about it and get passive income. That's going to, we believe, lower the price of the compute. Thank you, judges. Thank you, Team Obrigado. Thank you. So let me introduce to the stage a team called Proof of Reputation. Welcome. <laughs> There you go. So this is your clicker, so you can go front and back. And you can see your presentation here. The microphone. Okay. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. <laughs> I'm Alan. I'm Mexican. And I want to talk to you about a very common problem that is faced on the regions around Latin America. Think in this. You are in a small or medium business. You have to pay your employees. But by many of the factors that happen, during the week, maybe your, uh, your customer didn't pay you, or maybe you got any other situation, you don't have enough money to pay. So this is what we are talking about, and this is a problem that represents one of every three, uh, uh, one of every three fails in Mexico companies. So uh, we are right now presenting our project that is called Proof of Reputation. We are a score and loan protocol that allows you to request a loan based on your activity on chain. In our research, we discovered that almost all the businesses on Mexico are SMBs, and also that hundreds of thousands of people live on their banquet on the regions in Latin. Our prototype is ready. We worked 48 hours during this hackathon to develop a smart contract that currently is deployed on mainnet and can create a score for uh, some uh, quests that are already ready on near protocol. And also we develop an UX and UR interface that is deployed on both components. We have regulatory advantages as it is a dev mechanism, so there is no profit, and you can take this as a dev. We have KYC and AML alignment, 
as we can do quests that, re that recognizes your proof of, uh, of personhood or your proof of citizenship. We also aim to have low to non-bureaucracy in case that you ask for a loan on a bank on Latin America, uh, you can count the time that it takes for yet one. We have a plan, reach under banked regions, partner with local empresarial organization and talk about crypto payments and start seeding the first loans. Our current status is the first, we have a defined clear problem. We have a uh, score smart contract that is deployed on mainnet, and we have a UI, UI that is ready and you can test it on near.org. Next step is complete loan liquidity pool, alpha testing with OGs, and look for extra use cases of a score on chain. Our team, we are based in Mexico. We know very well what is this about, and we can invite any of you anytime you want to live what we are living. A loan can save the life of an SMB on LATAM. Who wants to be part of this? Muchas gracias. Thank you so much. Any questions from the judges? What's the motivation for a lender to be on this protocol? Okay, we think about the interest rate that you can get for this loan protocol. According to your score, you can get a bigger or a smaller interest rate that can represent a higher APY than the average, AP, uh, the, uh, average interest rate that you get from a bank. You go to Mexico and you get paid like 2% for your money. So let's loan this for your region and you start earn more. Thank you. If you don't have any, ah, one more question from Luis. Are you using NFTs? And if so, uh, can you explain a bit, a bit about it? Yeah, we are using Soulbound tokens specifically. So every time that you complete a quest, you get an NFT that you can see on your wallet, and you have a main NFT that represents your score, and it's updating accordingly to the activity that you are uh, completing the quest. Thank you so much. Team Proof of Reputation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. And let's welcome our next team, B4B for New York Social. Welcome on stage. Hi, I'm Anna. Our project, B4B, Influencer Marketing Protocol on Near Social. After launch, you the apps on Near need to tell about their project and attract new users. But we don't know how reach target users on Near community. Near native influencers and creators are the best way to amplify new dApps. That's why we create B4B, Influencer Marketing Protocol. With B4B, dApps can choose base best influencers based on their on-chain statistic and made promotional collaboration with them. Creators can monetize their channels, grow on-chain portfolio, and moreover, creators have more motivation to active grow on near socials. During NearCon, our team collect also uh, on-chain data from near social graph, support ad placement on near, and ad verification using near profile. Let's see how it's work. Inf influencer create account by connected wallet and verify ownership of his near social channel. Also, influencer put price for different ad placements. Advertiser choose best influencer based on their on-chain statistic from near social graph. Ad make ad booking. For this, he choose best ad placement format, date, and send content to the influencer. Advertiser. Uh, <laughs> Advertiser make pay payment via B4B protocol smart contract on Aurora in USDC. Influencer receive ad order. If influencer like the order, he accept it. 
and after this, on planned date, he download content and make publishing on his near social channel and send link to the advertiser. Advertiser, check what everything okay with ad placement, ad approve what ad done. After this, influencer receive payment on his wallet from our smart contract in USDC on Aurora network. Let's bring 1 billion users to Web3 by collaborating with creators and influencers. Thank you, Team B4B. Judges, do we have any questions? Can you talk a little bit about what you think is your total addressable market? Like, how big do you think this space is? Who are you going after? Are you planning to bring more people into near social? Is it r sort of a recruitment, or is it really more to sort of spur, you know, um, the the work that's already happening with the people that are on near social? Uh, yes, uh, we integrated a near social graph, and it's possible to place in near social dif uh, on dif uh, and collaborate with different influencers here. And it's also uh, possible on our platform to collaborate with other socials, like uh, uh, Web2 socials, uh, Twitter, Telegram, and other uh, with influencers there, uh, collaborate, uh, place uh, content, and attract in their protocols new users. Um, when the advertiser creates the advertisement or schedules, um, is it public? Uh, the contract? Yeah, yes. <laughs> uh, when advertisers uh, create new ad, it's uh, pu public in smart contract. The uh, all statistic store in uh, backend, but the main payment information and uh, other uh, on chain statistic public on, on smart contract on Aurora. Can we use B4B to bring more users to near social? Yes, it's possible, of course, uh, to collaborate with other uh, influencers from uh, Telegram, Twitter, and other socials, uh, make a placement, and uh, bring to near social too, and collaborate new users here. So, recommendation to near foundation to start using the services of B4B, to bring <laughs> more people to near. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thank you, so thank you judges. Thank you, Team P for B. Can I please have my cooker back? Let's welcome on stage the next team. Party and go. I promise this is going to be fun. <laughs> there you go. You can see it here. Hello, everyone. I'm Olivier Smith, and I'm part of Party and go. Two weeks ago, I was here in the exact same room and I was listening to Ilias talk about the NIR and the POS and Urbit integration. A bit later, me and my team attended EVE Lisbon where we built Chipper and we were like, why not? Why not do a back-to-back -back hackathon? And we felt like, what can we do for NIR? Well, we wanted to help bring the masses to NIR by building Partingo. This is the one? No, it's the green one. This is not the one. Is it this one? This one? No, it's the link in the picture. <laughs> Click from here. Sorry for the hiccup. Which is the time is ticking. No, no. The time is not ticking. That's unfortunate. Which is which slide? You need to switch from Mac OS to BOS. Can just click on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Present to you. Well, either way, it doesn't matter. <laughs> you can go to part.ngo and actually check out the UI. Um, basically, Partingo is a game that you can play whenever you're with a party of friends, hackers, or colleagues, and you're about to go to an event. Um, on Partingo, there's a lot of presets for, for example, a hackathon or a road trip with scenarios. And you can select which friend you think is most likely to end up in a certain scenario. So, for example, you go out on a club night and someone gets too drunk, someone loses his phone, someone gets kicked out by the bouncer. You can actually predict which friend will be in this scenario. 
There is a point system to it, but eventually the event log of this game gets thrown into an LLM and makes a recap of the night, creating a beautiful memory. So this is how we will bring near to the masses. How are we getting Partingo to the masses? Well, through user-generated marketing campaigns on TikTok, for example. And so we will market it as like a party drinking game, so it will go viral, right? But under the hood, it's, it's actually an awareness game to make people aware of certain social behavior, uh, recurring behaviors in certain social settings. This will cause the next user peak for near. The future for Partingo? Well, first of all, we'll continue building it and fixing it because they now fix the compiling error and we can actually make it functional. So um, we've got a lot of ideas for Partingo like uh, branded presets. So it is actually marketing value is amazing. Uh, we will integrate it with Alphabet, a prediction market on Urbit, so there can be some financials involved. And the best thing is we will connect this to the project we built at EVE Lisbon making it possible for us to record contributions and reward them with token or equity allocation so everyone here can become part of Partingo. And so on, part of NIR. Thank you so much. This was the team. They're unfortunately already back home. Um, check out party.ngo. It's not an NGO, but there's always a party. Thank you very much. Don't leave. Maybe the judges will have the questions. I'm just looking at your demo and it's pretty slick. Uh, mobile first? Yeah, mobile only at the moment. Uh, well, if we want to reach the masses, we go for mobile. Um, the UI was almost finished, but we were struggling with a few things. Uh, extra day of building and this will actually be functional. Can you talk a little bit about your intended revenue model? Uh, yes, one? so first of all, it will be brands and events like this event that can create presets. Um, this is one way of getting revenue, but there can also be a creator's market that can get very creative with presets for niche events and occasions. And then, the, yeah, we don't want to do advertisements. We do want to have branded presets, but we don't want to bother the users. What parts of this are on the are on the Neo chain or interacting with Neo? So this is the part that I forgot to say, but normally it was in the demo. Uh, whenever you join a game, you create a My Neo wallet, and so it doesn't really showcase um, the possibilities of Neo, but it's a very easy way to onboard the masses, and they'll get curious and they have FOMO to play the game. They will be on Neo without even knowing it. Thank you so much. Thank you. So let's invite to the stage our next team, which is called BOS Mutation. And presenting the guy in the t-shirt, legendary Pokemon. I, I mean, who could be that? <laughs> there is a clicker, so you could click to the right and use your microphone. OK, hi. Um, I'm the from Dublin's team, and we have implemented the BOS uh, mutation proposal. Uh, what problems does it solve? Um, boss component on the website, they are easy to fork, thanks boss, but actually they are hard to be used. Why? Uh, as soon as you would like to insert a button <coughs> uh, into the existing boss website, like near social, uh, here is, uh, it is, it is a, a dislike button. I am the owner of the change, but the website is owned by someone else. So what should I do? Uh, at first, I have to implement the button, no problem. But then I have to fork a container containing the button. Oops. Yeah. Please. Okay. Then I have to fork a container, container, a containing container with a button. Okay, and then I have to fork a container of container of container containing the button, and this is up to the 
<laughs> uh, uh, up to the top, and I will end up in creating the full fork of the entire website. But uh, it goes even worse, because this fork d does have no usage. So I have to start some marketing campaign to get usage from uh, Mopnir to, uh, to the my fork, and uh, it can be tricky because this original website is owned by the owner and why should he allow it? He will maybe reject it. So our solution is to apply this change on the fly and uh, change the website uh, immediately in permissionless way. Uh, this is how it works. Uh, this is the switcher. You can switch between mutations. Uh, this apply directly into the website. Uh, uh, you, you see here different mutations. Uh, for example, badges apply it uh, directly into the near web social. Or paywall, it's another mutation can contain paywall. Uh, it's here how you can create uh, mutations on the fly. Uh, you can just point out uh, to the um, element on uh, create replacement elements. And you can submit uh, this uh, mutation to the uh, blockchain, you can share with an, uh, this mutation with another guys or submit it as a pull request. So, uh, important to say that, um, yeah, uh, important to say this is a huge, uh, it works uh, to Web2 as well, and uh, it's, uh, it's a change for entire Web. Oh, okay. Done. Much sorry, it was your time. Yeah, Thank sorry. you. Any questions from the jury? Uh, is there a business model around this? Sorry? Is there a business model around this at all? Uh, yes, we have ideas. Sorry. <laughs> to get hired by Pagoda. Yes. <laughs> uh, does Boss has a um, business model around Boss? Is there any business model around Boss? It's similar. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Are there any possible negative consequences to being able to mutate things over and over and over again? Can you talk about any of the risks that you've thought about in terms of the, the tech, or are there no risks? This is a perfect solution. Uh, maybe I haven't understood you, sorry. So I, I'm curious if you've thought through, are there any risks from a technology standpoint or technical standpoint um, or user standpoint of having mutations upon mutations upon mutations sort of happening throughout, um, throughout the space? I'm asking how it will go uh, distributed. How yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes, uh, the, the idea is uh, that this mutation uh, will be maintained by communities uh, because, um, for example, for Twitter communities, uh, um, Nier has uh, one point million users, but uh, specific communities like Nier Social has uh, 10,000, and they will be interested uh, to engage uh, Twitter users into their community, and they will uh, make specific uh, mutations to engage people from the outer community into the, uh, into, for example, Nier Social community or uh, Learn Nier Club community. This is how it should work, because uh, smaller community are interested to engage people from the other community, and mutation is a tool for this. Thank you so much, Team BOS Mutation. <laughs> Can I have my microphone back? <laughs> Thank you, and the clicker. So let's invite to the stage next team called Uni Help. Uh, hello, everyone. So, where? Oh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, we are uh, near UniHelp, and uh, today we are proud to present our new solution to destroy the wall between students and the study abroad. So, yesterday I saw a pretty cool presentation of the CEO of Near Foundation, and um, it, I figured out one more time that actually. Um, yeah, our idea is pretty revolutionary, so it's AI secretary, uh, you see. Uh, so, uh, market data. Uh, so, over 5 million students uh, go uh, study abroad each year, and uh, they have faced a lot of problems, uh, for example, with uh, transition 
uh, diploma supplements and uh, other documents. And today we are going to solve this problem. So how we want to do this? So here you see that we have a student which is going to bring documents to the uh, university. Yeah? And usually it's some employee who do boring work, but today we do absolutely new attitude. So we have an AI. When university types the correct data into the AI, it's matched automatically all the subject which needed to match and uh, send information to near blockchain that each product or each university can also send this information and use this information for their own components. So uh, what we done? Actually, we have a, a smart contract uh, who creates another smart contracts for each university. Uh, so for example, if you are like a Garvard, you come to us, you ask for a new smart contract, and we create exact new smart contracts for you uh, to work with uh, our application. You can use our AI or not our AI. It doesn't really matter. But our AI will be trained on the information what's stored in the blockchain database or stored on our cloud. It depends on uh, are you working with us or with other uh, similar project. Uh, so uh, what we have next? Uh, next we have uh, our uh, quick video presentation. Uh, so I guess it started or not. Uh, so yeah, it can be started. Yeah, so uh, you can input information. It's actually how it works. So uh, you write down the university, what you're going to send your data. You can write down uh, the name of the contract, what is the owner of this uh, uh, like university storage, and also name the disciplines of what you're going to add. And in this case, uh, we add a geography or we can add, add a mess. And you can see that it's automatically matched by AI. So you can add one more subject on just save, and it goes to uh, train uh, AI on the new data or to give you back an uh, original and uh, good PDF of the diploma. Uh, so next slide. So monetization, our business model. So uh, a student can pay a re pretty low amount of money, like five euros. It's not that, good, that much, yeah, uh, for uh, trying to recognition of the uh, of their diploma, Sorry, of their... the time is up. So if the yeah. judges have any questions about the business model, it's a good time to ask. Yeah. Could, could you... Oh. <laughs> nice could, could you go a little bit deeper into the problem that you're solving? Uh, a little bit. Okay, so uh, firstly, uh, if you're trying to go study abroad, uh, you need to uh, match your subjects your translated subject or your original subject with subject of the university with which you're going to uh, study. Uh, so for example, in my university, I had uh, the subject of informatica. But here in the Lisbon, you, you call it object-oriented programming. And you need to match these two subjects. Basically, it's done by AI. So pretty simple. And this works still uh, done by assistant on cathedra manually for every university because we don't have centralized system where is everything match. So sorry, follow up question: Who is the user of this of this app? Is it the university or is it the student? It's a university because they need to match uh, documents what student bring to him. Yeah, uh, but it's always a fee to. Uh, apply for some project pro programs so it's also student interest so on the on the business model why would you not swap it so instead of uh, taking money from users or for, from students take the money from university they want to monetize this uh, application so uh, uh, offering a service to a student to uh, upload own diploma supplement and recognize at which university he will get more matching uh, courses and where he can uh, continue his education. Why do you need blockchain for this? <laughs> because it's a decentralized, uh, we use it like a de decentralized uh, database. Every university can put data in, in this uh, database, let's say, let's call it. And uh, every other university around the globe can access this data without any negotiation with some central institution. Yeah, it's a pretty big problem because right now, even in European Union, when all universities are connected, there are no one database. And near it's one database for all universities all over the world. Thank you, judges. 
Yeah, one more question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can you explain a bit of your AI, like how, how it works? Uh, it's uh, just uh, learning from uh, data what we put in a uh, blockchain. It's a language model who just try to recognize uh, if, if this description from diploma supplement fit to our description. That's all. Thank you, team. You need help. Thank you. Clicker. So we halfway through. Let's invite our next team. Called Partage. I hope I'm not messing up with the pronunciation. Partage B and B. That's it. You know, I remember looking under my rug at my Airbnb in Lisbon, and I couldn't see any key. So I dialed up the owner, and I asked her, well, <laughs> there's a key missing. It took her about three hours to come to the apartment, and as a traveler, I had a bunch of luggage, so I couldn't really do anything um, but sit there. And when she finally came, she gave me the key, and we just started having a nice conversation about Lisbon and the restaurants in the area. And this whole experience inspired me to like think about in our team to build a token that users will receive when they book a hotel or Airbnb that will act as a digital key for room access. And this token, when used and when shown to restaurants and other places, it will be used as a verification for the restaurant partners to the hotel to give people discounts. Combining these technologies on Near, we decided to combine Partage and wrote it to create the solution. So Rodit is a non-fungible token that is digitally signed. And what it does is to bring together three different life cycles that can be complex to manage and that can lead to problems that the ones that they need have. So you have the contract, the authentication, and the payment life cycles in one go. By assembling the Rodit token in the Partage platform, we are unlocking shared utilities on near blockchain. So basically how it works, owners will list properties to share, and users will select a utility in the marketplace that will mint a temporary access to it, they will use the NFC signal of their smartphone to unlock the utility at door. So how it goes, uh, in terms of UX, we are broadening the marketplace, we select a utility we like, you can book your access here, you have a calendar, you, ca you have details about the property, and by clicking the mint button, you receive a token, the Rodet, on your wallet, the new wallet, that you then use to open the smart lock uh, with the NFC signal. We conducted a bit of market research uh, and have pending partnerships. Um, so actually, we realized that one of the most important things for crypto ecosystems is to grow adopters in real life. And we found out that hotels see them as promising partners. Also, smart lock brands are in a quite competitive industry and they seek for niche markets. So we will, uh, for the next step, integrate our solution in existing NFC readers and follow up with the hotels who wanted to try the beta testing. Thank you. You can <laughs> the QR code. Perfect timing. Thank you so much. Judges, do we have any questions for the team Partage? Could you talk a little bit about your go-to-market? Where are you planning to begin with hotels in a certain geography? Is there yeah, any thinking around that? Yeah, in terms of go-to-market strategy, I think that partnering with smart lock brands is definitely a good, uh, a good move because they have existing users, catalogs, uh, customers, and so we will propose them to, uh, we actually got in touch with some of them. Uh, we have the list of 10 that has open API for developers, and at least two of them agree on working on integrating our app in their device. So then we will appear in their catalog, and their actual customers will know that they can uh, list their properties on the, on the near blockchain using our, our app. What parts of your solution work today and what sort of future functionality? Um, so what we have today is a marketplace 
is a smart contract to mint this raw uh, token. Um, and we also have a prototype of a smart lock that's proving the concept. So what we need to do now is follow up with the pending partnerships uh, with the smart lock brands to have a better device and a go-to-market faster than if we build it ourselves from scratch. Any more questions? If you try to operate through NFC, does it mean that um, it's not going to work on Apple? Because Apple devices are quite tightly controlling that. So the Rodit works with any device that can use a near wallet. Uh, the, uh, we actually have submitted a standards proposal, so this particular type of token can be displayed gracefully on any near wallet. So it will work on any operating system. No, Rodit would, but opening of the doors and usage of NFCs linked to Rodit. Ah, yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, totally compatible because we are using uh, elliptic cr cr cryptography for the signature of the Rodit. That means that by installing the public key in the smart lock, we can validate that the NFT is authentic and valid, even if the smart lock is offline. And that is quite widespread. You know, you have libraries for elliptic curve cryptography for any kind of uh, Internet of Things device, which is one of the most established ones and most trusted also. Thank you, judges. Thank you, Team Partaj. Can I have my clicker back? <laughs> Thank you so much. And let's welcome to the stage our next contestant, Nick, with the project Assistant. Oh, a sister, sorry. Is it a sister? A sister. There you go. Clicker. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Nick, and I am happy to present to you a sister, which is developer in a relationship platform powered by AI. We have a huge elephant in the room that no one is talking about. There are 30 million web uh, software developers worldwide, but only 20,000 of them contributing to Web3. Why so? Because developer success pyramid, it's not only about ideas, it's also about ground layer, it's about knowledge management, it's about onboarding and support. And Web2 folks, they already have like 20 plus years, almost 30 years to build all this, so developers in Web2 can succeed. But in Web3, we are not there. And we have two sides of this problem. On one side, developers who struggle to find tech documentation when they need to keep building what they want. And on the other side, we have DevRel engineers who are doing monkey jobs by simply asking, uh, uh, simply replying on the same repeatable questions. They don't have any data to improve the processes. And it's not scalable, it's not attractive, it's not automated. It's not the way how it should work in 2023. Our team was quite surprised with Ilya's vision about AI agents and there is like second box uh, development relationship agent. It's basically what we are working on, what we believe it is a team. And here we are, a sister. We connect all sources. We deploy AI bots. It could be a Discord, Telegram, or web application. And we hope that it's improved dev experience. Right now you can scan um, QR code. It's basically our Telegram bot, which is already live. And but still, it's not enough because we need human in a loop. And human in a loop, we have already collaboration. We just discussed it yesterday with Heroes. Our first bounties are there. If our bots are not capable to provide high quality uh, uh, support, you can go to Heroes, submit on Stack Overflow issue, and community members will uh, respond to you and will get bounty and we will retrain our bots based on this response. The same with updates documentation, we can do it with near tasks. So we have this a sister flywheel where community contribute, community get actively involved, community get rewards, and a sister works. So it's like very sustainable approach. We have a, uh, a team who has uh, firsthand experienced this problem on both sides, as a developers and also as a, uh, community managers. Um, if our vision to empower the next million of Web3 developers to build the products without spending a second on searching docs or waiting on manual support is something that resonates you, reach me out. would love to hear your uh, thoughts on this. So needed. <laughs> Any questions from the judges? 
So um, OpenAI just released chat assistance this week. Um, how are you going to compete with that? Yeah, like we are not offering one chat that's uh, very specific. Uh, it's like a first part. Second part, we offer the whole platform and the whole flow that automates and have two parts in a, a human in a loop. Like one is the DevRel team who can contribute the experience, understanding of ecosystem, how everything works, understand the priorities and, and like the right routes, the right way of uh, building some specific smart contracts or some specific ecosystem. And it's very important because if you will just upload any tech documentation from near to these bots, it would be a mess. It would be hallucinating. It would be uh, not correct answers, not correct support, and so on. And also, on the other side, we have community who actively working. So they are doing test features at the beginning, but then they also uh, get rewards, and also they can contribute to the quality of these bots. So it's not about like creating a vector database, which is one element of our system, but it's like the broader automation of DevRel function on protocol level. Thank you. So how does the system know when and how to involve a human? Yeah, so as soon as, uh, like at the beginning, we're doing uh, pre-training work in collaboration with DevRel engineers. It's something that we already have experience to do because we just launched three weeks ago on Solana and we already aggregate a lot of feedback from 200 developers who already use our solution for them. And right now, like over the next three weeks, we're gonna launch second version based on improvements that we got from DevRel teams. We have 12 DevRel engineers and also based on uh, contribution from community. So community, what they're doing, we launch bounties for them and uh, they can like build whatever they build, ask questions, we provide response. If it works, it works. If not, they can submit the bug report on Stack Overflow or Stack Exchange, like, hey guys, I found that it's this response doesn't work. It's kind of hallucinating or it's low quality response. And we, um, we're taking this data from this user, it could be through wallet, and we can reward that he submit like one, two, three dollars for submission some bugs. But also another person who on Stack Overflow or Stack Exchange provide a response, we analyzing that there is like, I don't know, five, 10, 20 likes. It means that people found this response valuable. And we're taking this response to our system, retrain our bot. So the next answer, the next question, similar question would be respond based on this user provided feedback. And in that way, we, we have very sustainable approach to, um, to upload information to our uh, vector database to, to upskill our bots, but also to involve all the community members to the process. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, we have time for one more question? I sure. Think. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm interested in learning or understanding like what sort of LLMs you plan to support. Right now we experience with ChatGPT, of course, like we played with 3.54 um, and also with Llama. Um, it's all depends on the customer needs, like if there is some specific needs, like for example, someone cares more about privacy. Thank you, I'm sorry, the time is up now. <laughs> but you sorry. got your answer, Thanks. right? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Let's invite to the station. It, um, it's three more projects to go, so if you're tired, just <laughs> take a breather. I'm going to entertain you with a story. So we wanted to, s uh, to create actually an AI track for this hackathon. But I didn't expect so many awesome AI submissions. So probably we will add the AI nomination, like a separate one. Because at this presentation, we, we I think we have three project, projects that integrated AI in their workflow. So let's uh, welcome to the stage our next contestant, DeFi Builder. Hello, my name is Daniel and I'm here to present DeFi Builder, the world's first fully no-code Web3 development platform that will empower the next generation of Web3 builders. Our goal is to fully democratize DeFi uh, development. Um, the problems that we encounter when we first joined the Web3 market is that we had incredibly high cost for development, very low security with freelance developers, and very long development timelines. And moreover, it was very skill specific. So whenever we needed something very specific to develop, it was incredibly hard to find the right developer for our own quest. And this is exactly where DeFi Builder succeeds. Uh, our protocol works on a modular structure. So essentially, it works with plug and play modules that users can utilize to deploy tokens, DEXs, uh, launch pads, and lending and borrowing platforms, and any other core DeFi protocol. It has customizable front end, so you can uh, consider it somewhat similar to WordPress, for example, but for Web3. 
And we will also have a module marketplace that will empower Web3 developers to start their own modules on our platform and make earnings from them. For NearCon, uh, we also developed a special module that is uh, Near AI, and it is an AI-powered, uh, fully, um, it's an AI model that was trained by us to generate smart contracts for users. But how does it work? Essentially, users can go to our website, they can pick their chain, in this case we have Near or Aurora, and then they can connect with their wallet. For Near, they can connect with their Near wallet and with Aurora with any Web3 wallet of their choice. Then they can select from various templates, and then each template will have certain features that can customize the template a little bit more. And then the magic happens with the customization where they can describe exactly what they want for their smart contract. And then they can pick between JavaScript and Rust and generate their smart contract with no coding knowledge at all. Afterwards, you will have your contract that is ready for deployment. For our roadmap, right now we are focusing very heavily on finishing near AI in the next three months. Uh, afterwards, we will also have an AI front-end generator that will use ABIs from the smart contract to deploy a front-end that is workable. And then we will also work on our module marketplace in the next eight months that will allow developers to join our ecosystem and make modules for us. As far as our go-to-market strategy, we're focusing very much on developers and on chains. For developers, we already have a group of over 700 developers that are working with us in a private group to test our product. And we also have various chains, uh, at the moment three, that are uh, fully partnered with us. Our business model has three different types uh, of uh, revenue streams. One of them is on deployment fees, the next one is on module royalties, and the third one is on module marketplace royalties. And our team is a talented team of eight members that have been working with us for the past three years. We've reached over $80 million in TVL across various projects on various chains. And now my colleague Lorenzo can answer all of the hard questions that are technical that you will give him. And for everything else, I'm here as well. Thank you. Hey. I'm here for the technical side. And we worked a lot to make this possible. So I would really appreciate like a technical question. <laughs> Uh, what hasn't worked when you generate a contract here? What kind of errors or mistakes do you see? Yeah, in general? That, that's a good question. I was hoping for a more easy question, but it's like a good question. In our roadmap, uh, basically, we want to integrate a unit test. So basically, as soon as a smart contract is generated, we are training a new AI that is able to generate tests for the specific smart contract. So we want to set up a generative adversarial network system where you have two different AI competing between them. One is generating the contract and the other one is testing. They go forward and back until the contract passes all the check and then it's served to the user. Thank you. Uh, where did you get the data for the near smart contracts? There are not a lot of them. Yeah, we trained our model by using uh, Langchain and the Llama Index. We scraped the data from your GitHub. We found a lot of examples, and then we look everywhere in the internet to find a lot of new contracts, and we use that as well to, to train our system. Uh, instead, for the Aurora smart contract, we use the Open Zeppelin as well, and a data set of over 100,000 smart contracts that has been verified on Ethereum scan. Yeah, this is simple. I mean, if you want to have a simple thing on board to Aurora. Yeah. <laughs> Any other question? Nope. Oh, I would just say that I, very, I really hope that in the near future, we can give the ability to these amazing crows in front of us to be able to join the DeFi space and enter in the near protocol in just a few clicks. That's really what is our project, is giving <laughs> to everybody the ability to join the DeFi world and the DeFi space. Thanks, but that's Th an extra This speech. is how you use your spare time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you Thank you so much, Thank you. DeFi Builder. And let's invite to the stage our next project, which is literally called Next, um, as TFO for your startup. Welcome, Sasha. Hello, everybody. Can you just uh, it's a pleasure to, to, see the the stage? to see you here. There you go. And uh, I'm a founder of a uh, financial platform for startups, Next. And now I'm ready to tell you more about the project. So. I worked like a financial consultant for more than 10 years. And previous year, I decided to, to start 
uh, digitalize uh, the process of business planning. So during this year, we already like uh, collect more than 10 startups which, uh, uh, which waiting for, uh, uh, for the product. So, uh, yeah, it's me. Uh, uh, we already have several financial experts uh, like uh, um, a team. Also, uh, during the hackathon, we, uh, uh, we decided to work together with Alex, who is a blockchain guru. And uh, <coughs> now um, I should tell you a little bit more about the product. Imagine, we have a lot of startups that failed this winter and before. Uh, and uh, less than 10% uh, of startups stay alive in a year. Our aim to help startups uh, make better financial planning and also forecasting of the metrics to uh, see more startups uh, like a businesses. So uh, what about NIR? So uh, a year ago we tested uh, and make a, a little prototype based on near wallet and implement function of uh, uh, invoicing and uh, DAO, DAO collection. And uh, during this year, talking to accelerators and incubators and uh, other, other people from the industry, it was, it, it become absolutely clear that solution uh, which will help uh, Web3 startups collect data, absolutely necessary. So, uh, it's uh, our goals for the year. Uh, for our go goals uh, um, this year and plans for, for the next. So, uh, so Alex, uh, are you ready to tell more about technology? Yeah, so uh, of course all the startups are not willing to share financial data with any third party, especially putting it on the blockchain. And here where we can utilize the most advanced technologies in crypto space, zero knowledge machine learning, basically to allow anyone to share any data they want uh, with this model, and it can give insight without revealing any details of, uh, uh, of this financial information to even the model itself. And of course, uh, NIR is a really good fit for as an infrastructure to run this zero knowledge machine learning uh, uh, pro products because of scalability features and sharding. So that's pretty much it. Thank you so much. Team uh, next. Yeah, and uh, during the hackathon, we made a plan how to integrate and I'm how to I'm build this. Unfortunately, the time is up. Ah, OK. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, team. Any questions from the judges? Uh, yeah, but I'll softball you this, like the thing you're about to say. What, what works now? What does it do today? Once again, please. Sure. Uh, what parts of the system are built out today? What does it do now that you've finished the hackathon? Now system works manually. I collect uh, best practices from like best incubators from the uh, from Europe and the U.S. And now it's like uh, now it looks like a uh, like a pool of smart tables to like and work manually. And part of of product already made on near and uh, like. Uh, like a wallet with uh, with function of uh, invoicing to like denonymize uh, your contractors and uh, your transactions because it's necessary to pass through to, to pass through due diligence collect all transactions that you did on in your wallet and also the second function it's a collection of contracts uh, in one place when you can see which uh, which uh, um, which kind of relationships you have uh, with uh, your contractors and partners and the projects around you and Web3. Thank you, judges. Any more questions? Um, how do you get your product going? So I want to engage you. What do you, what do I as a startup founder need to give you, you know, can, how do I start working with you? Now it works like that. We collect all data that you have, your like uh, uh, bank account, bank, bank statement, uh, information from your Excel files, uh, uh, information about your plans, and that also we ask you uh, like 50 questions about the startup. And now it, take, it takes like five days to uh, implement uh, like uh, modern accounting in your company for small companies, and also to make a business plan based on, on your information and uh, data. We need just collect your plans, 
your statements and the current, current data is about the startup. Thank you so much, team. Next. Thank you, judges. Thank you. And last but not least, we present Quex. Please welcome to the stage, ABB. <laughs> not yet. Yeah. Oh, you have a mic. GM, GM. The rumors are true. I've been recruited by an autonomous AI agent to present to you the future of governance. But first, why autonomous AI agents? Because DAOs are a disaster. We have to stop lying to ourselves. It doesn't work for many reasons, mostly around human coordination and competence, or lack thereof. But when you introduce AI, it's a new world. Efficiency, they don't sleep, it performs. When you blend it with the blockchain, superpowers. Of course, these ideas are not new. We had an entire AI day yesterday. We had some of the brightest minds in the space share their view and their vision for the space. But today, we delivered. On mainnet right now, you can find our MVP. On an interface which is quite familiar with any GPT agent, you can trans interact with our grants allocator uh, a, a autonomous AI agent. You can go there now and play with it. We call it a game because it's not a real grant, but you can interact with the agent to see how efficiently it performs. It will ask questions as required. It is polite. It is, fa it is fast. If you get the message back that you've been funded, it automatically executes the near smart contract and you get your funds immediately. No need to wait for weeks or months or maybe never hear back. Here is a photo of Steven, our grants agent at work. So what have we done for this hackathon? There are four key repos. The first one is a bus front end where you interact with the AI. The second one is a back end server. Third, smart contracts on near. And the third one, the SGX uh, uh, server to connect with um, OpenAI. So the secret sauce really is in the bottom right. We've taken the approach of trusted hardware. Some people may try to do ZK. That doesn't work. The proofs are too big. We have cracked the SGX certifier so that without any human intervention, we're able to certify that the inputs from the user are what the LLM is taking into account and that the input from the LLM is what the smart contract is taking into account. Trusted hardware, we can take the private key all the way back to the Intel factory where the private key is in the trustless execution environment. Are the funds safe? As safe as any commercial cryptography out there right now. So why is this important? Is this a toy for your children for Christmas? No. This is important because first, we need something worth governing. And right now, we have a huge community treasury that is in desperate near of that efficiency layer to get funds out there to the community. We want to start funding initiatives that matter so that in time, it will have more and more public goods, which will also become likely governed by DAOs. The future belongs to AIs talking to each other, and we've enabled the trust layer through near smart contracts, smart contracts to make that happen. We've gotten fantastic feedback, and would love to hear some questions uh, from the audience or the judges. Yeah, I'm sorry, time's up. Thank you so much for an amazing pitch. <clears throat> Let's hear from the judges. So how is Steven trained? How does he make his decisions? Yes, so Steven, is a traditional LLM, so it will be assessing the input from the user. You can customize it based on your custom data, but this really goes to show just how dire the state of DAOs are. Even basic due diligence, like reading the proposal or checking someone's GitHub repo, even that core level of performance that you would expect from someone doing their job, Steven will perform relentlessly, efficiently, and instantly. Going forward, we can introduce things such as AI vision. You can have more and more custom data sets. Because all the inputs are on near smart contracts, it can actually learn on itself and yeah, hopefully build more custom data sets. Is there a business model around this? Yes. So if anyone has a DAO and assets worth managing, we'd love to talk to you. Probably a small fee for handling um, all the money efficiently. We'd like to think about the value generation, both in terms of what you save from paying people to do a fraction of the job, but also in terms of value creation. How much value could we unlock if we have a shared interface for anyone to be able to access funding in a fair way? And yeah. 
Thank you, judges. Thank you, team. Let's have another round of applause for our hackers. Now we, Drew and I, will take a 10-minute break to select the pitching competition leader, winner. So let's go backstage. <laughs> we will be back shortly. So we have a competition winner, but I won't tell you because I have some more people who want to tell you about this. So we have Chris and Ilya for the closing remarks and the announcement of the pitching, <laughs> pitching competition winner. Welcome on stage. All right. Okay. Thank you for those who survived. Still here? Yeah. Oh, Hope wow. it was a really exciting, good event for you. It's been an amazing event for us. There's been a ton of work put in this, but it's amazing to see kind of all the energy, all the projects, all the community coming together, people building, people kind of talking, finding partnerships. And so, yeah, really great to be here, really excited. And, you know, looking forward to see you obviously still, you know, throughout today, but also in uh, next year as well. So, Neocon had over 150 speakers, three venues, and 3,000 people registered. It's been an amazing event, as I said. Kind of, uh, if you haven't been to a hacker space, if you haven't visited other spaces, like, really cool, lots of exciting stuff going on there. I mean, you obviously see seen exciting projects here. And like Iria said, none of this would have been possible without many, many different people. So first of all, all of our fantastic sponsors. Thank you so much. It means a huge amount to us and to the ecosystem, doing some very important work here. And of course, great media partners as well. Another round of applause. Thank you very much. And last, but definitely not least, Developers, builders, founders. <laughs> but seriously, the whole near community, everyone here in this room, you know, we would not be the ecosystem we are without each and every one of you. So thank you so much for traveling all this way, taking time out of your busy, busy, busy schedules, um, you know, to, to celebrate Nearcon with us. And for people who are watching online, we'll see you next year. Yes. So one of the other great things we had this, this Neocon was um, Horizon's first IRL event with 60 hand-picked founders, um, hugely impressive group of people, some extremely exciting projects as well. And this is really just the beginning of Horizon's next chapter. Uh, and we're super excited to see uh, what is what is coming next, but I think a big congratulations also to the Horizon team for running such a, such a fantastic experience, and I know all of the founders, um, it was great to, to get to meet many of them, and also they seem to have a, an incredible experience. So well done, Horizon team. And of course, this year was the very first year for the uh, Neocon app. Everyone has been stacking their NCON very well, but also not just stacking it, but actually spending it, using it in this fantastic um, conference-based economy. So we've had over 5,000 transactions through the app. We've had over 250,000 NCON has been spent on you know, delicious food, on, on the great swag. And of course, as we, as we mentioned, the top three NCON earners are gonna be announced next week and they will get a free trip to next year's Neocon, which is amazing. And Jake doesn't qualify. <laughs> 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 All right, so with further ado, I want to announce the winner of the pitch contest. It's a DeFi builder. It's really amazing to see, you know. <laughs> while I was, you know, talking about how AI can be helping developers and augmenting our experience. People are already building this at the hackathon, so you know, next time we just can you know, all move to the hackathon space and just hack instead. I think nobody need to listen to me. 
but yeah, thanks uh, for all the builders who participated in the hackathon. I mean, all the projects are really exciting. Uh, there's a ton of other uh, kind of nominations as well, so this is not the only thing. So, um, but yeah, the important part, continue building. There's tons of stuff uh, to build across web, open web and web three. We have really kind of exciting stack now to uh, power with apps, and I'm really excited for uh, AI kind of applications as well, and uh, we're going to have some interesting stuff there. So just to kind of remind what is the open lab, right? Um, it's really kind of the vision we're aiming for, where internet, their people own their assets, data, and power of governance. It's really about kind of people being in control and going away from the current state where the middleman, the, you know, or kind of centralized services are turning users, turning kind of interactions that you have with others into a product. And we want to be the place, the ecosystem, where the best uh, kind of four founders to build on, right? Not just if you want to use the blockchain, not just if you want to use the front end, not kind of across the stack, anything you build in this paradigm, we want to be there, help you, and provide tooling, provide the ecosystem support, provide the connections and connectivity. Right, that's why we have Horizon, which is a founder kind of uh, network and contributions. It has its own programs to uh, incubate founders. That's why we continue building more and more tools and instruments beyond just blockchain to really simplify onboarding. That's why we're working with consumer apps that you can actually partner with to bring kind of your application in front of users. So. <laughs> Some news, some of the, the big announcements we've had this week, right? So I think the first one, which is just about the worst kept secret in the history of our ecosystem, we have, speaking of bringing founders back to the center of, of, of the ecosystem, we have Ilya as the found, foundation CEO. And we announced near data availability, right? We're bringing not just, as I said, if you're building on near, but if you're building a layer two, if you're building an Ethereum ecosystem, you can leverage near to drop your transaction costs 8,000 times, which is a lot for those. Uh, and we have first uh, kind of layer twos that are building with us, uh, which is really exciting and kind of been an amazing pickup on Twitter as well across Web3 ecosystem. And so this is amazing kind of in this broadening the platform that we're building and really showcasing the technologies that we build, how can it help m kind of m beyond just, you know, the layer one, but in this broader modularity uh, stack. Then we announced Zero Knowledge WebAssembly partnership with Polygon. This is really a technology partnership kind of advancing what you can do with their knowledge and allowing to have succinct proofs of, for pretty much generic computation to have for scaling blockchains, to have better decentralization, better bridging, as well as more generically, you know, machine learning, computation on edge, going beyond just the blockchain use cases. It also means that you can unify liquidity, unify access, and kind of abstract the blockchain as you kind of implementing this uh, technology across uh, Web3 general. And this, again, brings us closer to Ethereum ecosystem, allows to have a lot more interoperability, and really sets us up to kind of be the technology stack that is where you can build, where you can kind of transact, where you can have and own your value, and have the security of the whole Web3 ecosystem. Finally, today we announced a partnership with Eigenlayer, which is another <laughs> way to partner with um, L2s. <laughs> and this is about leveraging Near's fast finality, right? Near is what blockchain that allows to kind of produce blocks every second, finalize them every two seconds. And what this means for rollups that they can publish their proofs, publish their data, and have. Uh, not just data availability, but also proof verified and settled by near uh, blockchain. 
This means you can have 4,000 times cheaper settlement in three seconds, comparing this to hours or days, and uh, kind of with like standard way that uh, protocols doing this. It means you can bridge, again, value between layer twos, and really kind of in the spirit of open web, we unifying the blockchains. We're making kind of them faster and cheaper across the board, and with blockchain operating system and kind of the stacks we build, we're really creating a way to abstract that out and power the user experience now to have all of this experience in one place, right? If you can use, you know, any layer two, any layer one, from one kind of sets of applications with one account ID, it starts to become less important where exactly things are, and it gives developers more flexibility how can they build. And that's what we're really going after. This allows us to kind of both provide immediate value as well as align this for the future, kind of working across the Web3 ecosystem. And finally, I just I mentioned before, AI is near. Uh, the core idea that AI is a f transformative technology for productivity, for ways we're going to consume and produce information, as well as for ways we're going to interact with uh, value and the future of work. And we have some chat, uh, <laughs> uh, oh, the update reminder. Um, <laughs> and so one day we have open web that doesn't have updates, right? Uh, and so AI is kind of fundamental, <laughs> fundamental vertical for us. It's kind of the background of our team. We've been already working with uh, top AI teams in the space. This was really cool hackathon projects doing uh, AI already. And we're going to continue investing in this space. And you know, stay tuned for more cool announcements around AI and near. So step into Open Web. Yeah, welcome to the conference. Thank you for being here. Thank you for. And thanks to everyone who made this conference so wonderful, so seamless, particularly Jack Collier, the foundation CEO, and his fantastic team, Yudira Blocker. Thank you guys so much for everything. Um, and also, final reminder that, you know, Nikon is not quite over yet. We still have the incredible closing party tonight, 9 p.m. I hope we're going to see all of you there, um, and we can continue the celebration. Yeah, and thank you for Littles to sponsor it and yes. organizing. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Good to see you all. Yeah, thanks, guys.